I was given the topic of uh, direction and mapping and tried to figure out what it means for today and uh, I hope I, I got it sorted. Um, I've got the slides on slide share. If people want to pick that up later. But first I want to acknowledge uh, two, area, two parties really. One is the Learning Analytics Working Party uh, and it's, as you can see, it's representative of, of many people across the university from academic and administrative uh, and support staff. So it, it is a big group. Um, and then also Simon um, is very humble in, in, in his approach, but he has done magnificent work since he was appointed in my section uh, just over a year ago. Uh, and it could have been a joint presentation, but Simon has done as the principal organizer of the symposium, I think he's done enough. I didn't want to draw him into, but he can answer the difficult questions during Q&A time. So I'm going to talk about the concepts, the uh, development at CSU, the principles we're using, and then unpacking the CSU model. And a lot of that is work in progress. Um, and not all of us agree on everything, I must say that as well, as any good university uh, does. Uh, but I'm going to share a number of things with you. First of all, the definition. Now, uh, SOLAR, uh, we use this definition in the learning analytics strategy of the university, uh, where it's uh, defined as the measurement, collection, analysis, reporting of data about learners and their context. That's the critical thing. For purposes of understanding and optimizing learning and the environments in which it occurs. And it's an important to understand that the environments we're talking about or the context does include systems, it includes learning experience design, the role of teaching staff and all those things. So learning analytics doesn't just look at the learner, it looks at the fuller context in which the learner operates. And there's a term used, uh, some of you might be aware of, academic analytics which is more focused on organizational processes. So in learning analytics, we specifically look at the learner, learner and not at the analytics on the organizational processes. Okay, here's a number of limitations that we felt we wanted to be cognizant of. First of all, learning is a complex social activity and technical methods do not fully capture the scope and nuanced nature of learning. So learning is not something you can easily put in a box and say, okay, now we've got everything in the box, let's just measure it, just get the metrics, get the understanding. It's a complex social activity. The other thing is a large part of learning occurs offline. While learning analytics have to do with digitization or digital systems, there's a huge amount of learning uh, in our, for our off-campus and our on-campus students that occur offline and, and, and away from the campus. And we're not measuring that at all. Uh, the other important thing is to look at the proximity of, to drivers of student success. So what makes for student success and then we measure those things. It doesn't help us to measure the things that's really having no effect at all. The other thing is that at CSU, we've uh, got a policy and guidelines on using external educational technologies, and that's a trend. More and more academics are using external technologies like MediaWiki, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. The fact is, we don't have any stats on that. We don't have analytics on that. It's not integrated. So what we're saying is we've got to be very careful that we, when we look at learning analytics, that we don't assume, once we understood the learning analytics we can measure, that we actually have the full picture. We don't have the full picture. George Siemens said that we can have learning analytics about social interactions, about learning content and how people interact with content. We can look at different spaces and see how we measure that. We can look at the interaction with the university system and analytics on the intervention and adaptation that we just talked about in the previous presentation. So learning analytics is much more than the learner in a specific subject doing 
specific type of work. Adaptation. Uh, and that came uh, through discussions at the Learning Analytics Working Party. The actions need to be critical and ethical. Uh, learning analytics can be provided to the student, the teaching staff, support staff, administrative, etc., etc. So there could be a wide range of audiences. But it's ultimately about adaptation of design, behavior, and system. If we measure something and we don't use the data, it's really a, 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 it's a futile exercise. It's got, something's got to change. Either the design of the learning or the behavior or the systems that support that. And lastly, we talked about yesterday about the personalization of learning. That's a goal we have, that we can personalize the learning of the student. So it is important to think, what are we going to do with the data that we collect? And that ties into the other thing, which we call agency. We had in the, the model uh, the term audiences that we provide, and I'll show you the model in, in a moment. Uh, but we changed that to talk about agency, and again it's about not being uh, passive, but being active. So somebody's going to act on the data that we provide. Um, and some of this comes from uh, Alan, and we had good discussions about these things. As part of normal work, we've got to try and align the learning analytics with what people normally does. And it's part of what they normally uh, encounter in their work. So this is not about just what we can measure, but how it will be used and how it will be used effectively. Lots of benefits, I'm not going to run through all of them. Again, from George Siemens, what can learning analytics do? It can reduce attrition, you can personalize things, you can enhance the learner achievement, you can make better use of teacher time and effort because it's targeted. You can have higher quality learning design, uh, you can zoom in or zoom out so that you can basically get information on a course. You can zoom in on a specific subject. You can look at specific students or specific teachers. Um, and it can lead to more rapid achievement of learning goals. So these are all potential strengths or uh, benefits of learning analytics. So at CSU we decided in our strategy that our goals is when will we know when learning analytics were successfully implemented? First of all, if it increases student success. So that's the first thing. If it increases the quality and effectiveness of online learning as in the assessment results. So that the, the, these are our goals really. Increase the quality and effectiveness of online teaching. Not just online learning, but online teaching. Uh, increase student retention rates increase online engagement, and increase the appropriateness of subjects selected by students. And this is a nice application at a university in the States where they actually, based on the students' performance, guide them to which subjects they should be selecting next. So you can do all these kind of things with the right kind of learner analytics. There are lots of drivers uh, for us to look at learning analytics. Things like um, evidence-based professional learning of teaching staff, so that you actually starting provide evidence for that. The, the fact that in your distance education or online, there's an increasing distal relationship that we're trying to minimize. But the fact is we need to see how those people operate at a distance and try and understand uh, how they do. Uh, so what are some of the things that have been happening? We've had the Learning Analytics Working Party started in 2013 that I chair. We developed the Learning Analytics Strategy by the middle of last year. Planning and Audit has been working on at-risk uh, students and many other things for quite a while. Um, Simon has been working on the student responsiveness rating, how responsive are academics to students. Um, smart learning has been working on uh, things that Alan will be talking about soon 
uh, including uh, the feedback on design. Um, we currently still busy developing a framework model and plan around learning analytics. And then uh, as part of the work uh, that Simon uh, is doing is developing a theoretical model of student engagement and he's already run a pilot on that. So these are some of the things beside the fact that academics are doing their own research and as Barney showed yesterday, uh, are do using learning analytics in interesting ways based on specific subjects. This is a, just the theoretical model that uh, if you have any questions, Simon will answer those questions. Um, <laughs> But uh, looking at various aspects of learning and what makes for good learning and assessment and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, uh, then there's Blackboard, Interact 2, analytics that's coming. They've got about 100 reports. We're going to have to evaluate those things, see if it fits with CSU, amend these, uh, and so forth. There's a dashboard that students can see how they're going. We've got to think whether it's ethical, uh, to provide them and, and whether it's really supportive. So we're not just going to dump the stuff, we're going to carefully look at it. Uh, there are lots of different uh, role players, as you've seen in the working party. Uh, planning and audit, division student learning, the library is doing interesting work around how people access the electronic materials, how does that relate to their, their uh, results and things like that. Uh, DIT is building the uh, working with Hadoop and, and helping with the data warehouse. Smart Learning is doing their work. You imagine it's it's a learning analytics is a streaming. You imagine around looking at research possibilities um, about the governance. Uh, the Learning Analytics Working Party report directly to the Curriculum Learning and Teaching Committee of the University. That's just a, a recent change. So we've got a direct input into that structure. Okay, principles, broad stakeholder engagement. You already saw that proximity I talked about. The focus is on student success and it is a people focus. Um, but student success is the main focus of learning analytics at CSU. And we've defined it as quality learning, achievement of goals, retention and progress and well-being. So that's what we're trying to achieve at the outset. But it's ultimately about people and so we've got to be respectful in how we handle data and how we interact with those folks. As we've heard just in the previous uh, presentation, we want to empower and motivate. So we've got to be careful how we use the information. Ethics. Before I write my name on the board, I'll need to know how you're planning to use that data. So the fact is, uh, we've got to use data for what it's collected for. And we've got to guarantee confidentiality and privacy. And the trust principle underlies learning analytics. So that's critical. And I think Simon mentioned that in the introduction this morning. Uh, we could be seen as the digital big brother and, and not as somebody who helps and, and support. How much information do we need to provide to the student? Um, you know, what part of the dashboard information is really important? Some people really go, some universities go and say, you know, out of the class of 30, you're sitting at number 25. And, you know, is, what kind of message is that, you know, and, and so forth. So, um, the other interesting thing is, will learning analytics influence grading? We know grading is a, or marking is, is a subjective process. It's not perfectly objective. If I know that the prediction is the student is not going to pass, does that influence me as a marker? So we've got to think about those kind of things. The other interesting thing, there's a court case, I think in the States, was about a student that knew that the university had certain... Uh, information but did not act on it to help them. So they took them to court. Uh, so uh, what is our accountability for the things that we know about the students? Okay, lastly, unpacking the CSU model. Um, so in little stages, student success, I said, is the key focus. We've identified six domains 
uh, six drivers of student success. The characteristics of the student, their behaviors, teaching, curriculum design, learning environment, and support. And we say that these drivers operate on three levels, on the subject, course, and university level. So we've got to understand these drivers. If we understand the drivers, we can then define the metrics and methods have feedback and reporting coming from the agents, which we call them instead of the audience, but the organizational design is there because we've got to make sure that these inf the, the analytics are actually being used. And in an organization, there's things on a strategic level, there's technical things, structural, operational, and cultural things. So what we're saying is learning analytics is not just about the first bit, it's about the bit where it actually get used and 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 the last bit is feedback so the whole model is due for ch or is open to change as we learn more things as it's applied in the organization and as the feedback comes back so that is the model we are working with it's not a complete model either but uh, I feel quite comfortable that we're looking at the literature and trying to understand these things before we actually go in and just start measuring big data that, which we can measure. Saying we have started the journey, we have packed the suitcases, I think we're on our way, uh, but there are still many hills to climb. That's it. Thank you.